就誒過。Colleagues, this is the first meeting of the Bills Committee on Inland Revenue Amendment Bill 2013. Item one on the agenda: election of chairman. Nominations, please. I nominate Mr. Kenneth Long. You accept any seconder, Mr. Dennis Kwok? Oh, you second, yes. One nomination. Any other nominations? If not, I declare Mr. Kenneth Long elected chairman. Is it necessary to elect a deputy chairman? Yes, Mr. Riley. I nominate Mr. Chen Kim Po. Do you accept Mr. Chen Kim Po? Any seconder? Yes. Okay. Any other nominations? If not, I declare Mr. Chen Kim Po elected deputy chairman of this bill's committee. For this bill, we've decided to consult the industry, including professional bodies and the 18 district councils. Invitation letters will be issued to them, and an invitation will be uploaded to our website. If you read paragraph four of the LegCo brief, or sorry, rather the, our members brief, you see that a number of time slots, one, two, three, four, five, have been set out. Well, we'll see whether or not, after using these time slots, we'll be able to complete our scrutiny work. For those members who are available for a certain time slot, please discuss with the Secretariat. The first time slot is the 21st of May. Well, Ms. Tari Lee, well, it's because of my personal commitments. Can we not have both Tuesdays? You only mean the first Tuesday morning. I'm only not available in the morning. Yes, point taken. Other colleagues, any time slot in which you are available? Yes, the major consideration is to accommodate as many colleagues as possible, in particular the meetings here. Well, let me propose an option. I understand that Ms. Tari Lee may have to attend EXCO meetings, but LegCo is LegCo, EXCO is EXCO. So LegCo should come first. LegCo should be given priorities. We well, understand, Mr. To. So long as we have a quorum, uh, we'll still convene the meeting. I understand, Mr. Chairman. So I was very modest just now. I was only saying that uh, if possible, do accommodate my schedule. I understand. In fact, we may not accommodate any particular member. Yes. But you have to understand that at present we have to face the reality of filibustering. Many time slots won't be available. And for the available time slots, we're all hard pressed. Even for the betting duty amendment bill, and even for those meetings chaired by Ms. Starry Lee, we have a lot of meetings at the same time. Sometimes is difficult to avoid a clash. Any time slot without a clash is a very good slot. If we are to accommodate other circumstances, it will be difficult in this period of time. Yes, Mr. Toll, we understand that. The Secretariat has obtained these time slots will adhere to these time slots as far as possible. Just now, I just uh, wanted to know who will not be available. I just uh, allow colleagues to air their views. And then for 4B, we've reserved 
the 25th of May, a Saturday. Well, that's a Saturday for a morning public hearing, which is to start at 9.30 a.m. So please attend the public hearing as far as possible. This should not clash with any other meeting. Maybe it will clash with the PAC meeting. I don't know. There may be a clash. Still, we have to choose it. Mr. Chairman, is it really necessary to have a public hearing? Well, we don't have any decision yet. I just want members to reserve that time slot. If we are to have a public hearing, we'll, in, we'll have to read the written submissions from organizations and individuals first before making a decision. We haven't made a decision yet. Mr. Charles Mock, Mr. Chairman, what you're saying is that we receive the documents first. The documents will be circulated among us before we decide on whether or not to have a public hearing. We'll receive submissions from the professional bodies first, and then at our meeting, First meeting will decide whether to have a public hearing. That's rather strange. Well, basically, we can decide here whether we need a public hearing. In my opinion, exchange of information and data is sensitive to companies. I think we can actually decide on a public hearing. If many people are to come, we can have a longer meeting. Otherwise, we can have a shorter meeting. If you want to save time, after receiving the submissions, you ask people whether they want to come. People may have different considerations. I personally think that we should have a public hearing. Mr. James Toe, I hope that Mr. Chan Kim Paul can reconsider his remark. Well, this bill is sensitive because it's related to the exchange of information and data. Some people may benefit, but there may be technical issues and worries. So technically, we should allow people to air their views. It's just like uh, the meeting we just had on the bedding duty amendment bill. And Mr. Martin Liu, a jockey club steward, opposed a public hearing. And then our colleagues managed to convince him, and he dropped his opposition. Public hearings are very normal. And before the introduction of this bill, there's no public consultation. If we are now to legislate to change the whole foundation of the regime, we should have broad consultation. Well, Mr. Chen Kimpo, Mr. Chairman, if you heard me clearly, I did not say that we should not have a public hearing. I just wanted to think more carefully about this. I hope that colleagues won't complicate simple issues. If there is a need, uh, I'll follow colleagues' views. As the chairman suggested, I'm more inclined to reading submissions from the professional bodies first. If uh, those papers suffice, we won't need a public hearing. Otherwise, by all means, we can have a public hearing. Any response? Mr. Sin Chung Kai? Well, Mr. Chairman, let me respond. In what way should we carry out public consultation? Well, normally, we do it uh, online. For the professional bodies, you can issue letters to them. But apart from professional bodies, non-professionals in society may also be interested in the subject. The related trade associations and chambers of commerce may also be concerned. So I support a public hearing. Colleagues, if you consider that we should issue invitation letters to a certain organization or individual, please let the secretariat have their names and particulars. 
And apart from attending the public hearing on the 25th of May a.m., they should also be invited to submit written submissions. So this is a two-pronged approach. But of course, as Mr. Sin Chung Kai said, if we have more deputations, we'll have a longer meeting, otherwise a shorter meeting. Any more comments? If there's no other business, members, if you have uh, any deputations in mind, please submit their names to the Secretariat. Thank you very much.